लाइफ साउथ वेव्स माइक्रोवेव्स इंफ्रारेड वेव्स एंड विजिबल स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ लाइट Now all these radiations are used for various purposes, for different purposes. Say for example, sound waves they are present in your radios, okay, and many other things. So sound waves are utilized. These waves are used in the radio signals. Whereas microwaves they are used in our home, in the kitchens, in the microwave ovens. Infrared rays they were previously used in the mobile phones for the data transfer. The previous mobiles of Nokia etc. they had this infrared device in it, and that infrared those infrared rays were used for the data transfer, file transfer, photos etc. And now this is the visible spectrum of light, and visible spectrum of light consists of different radiations starting from red. A D B to B, violet. You know this term B G O R B I B G Y O and R. That is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors are there in the visible spectrum of light. Okay. So in the visible spectrum of light, the red color. when it comes first and then ending with the violet color so the spectrum of light just in front of this red color before this red color this is infra it is before the red color below the red color that is why it is infra and after the violet color that is ultra okay so after the violet color the waves the radiations Which are coming may be called as ultraviolet radiations. Okay, so up to visible spectrum of light, if we expose to these radiations, they do not cause cancers. You have not heard that I have 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 heard causing cancers okay now this ionizing radiations again consists of three different groups of radiations the first one is called as ultraviolet radiation ultraviolet radiation the second one is called as x ray and the third one is called as gamma ray gamma ray okay what are the usage of these radiations Ultraviolet rays. They are medically used for the process of sterilization. You have studied in your second year different methods of sterilization, in which you have studied about physical methods and chemical methods. One of the physical method of sterilization is by using radiations. These radiations are used to kill the bacteria, bacterial spores, and in our household, these radiations are used in RO, RO filters. उसमें भी यूवी लाइट लगी होती है ठीक है एक्स रेज दीज रेडिएशन वी यूज फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन पर्पज ओके एक्स रेज दे आर यूज इन इन्वेस्टिगेशन पर्पज एंड सेम गैमा रेज दे आर ऑल्सो यूज फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन ओके दे हैव हाई एनर्जी हाई पेनिट्रेशन पॉवर एज वेल एज दे हैव दी कार्सिनोजेनिक इफेक्ट अंडरस्टूड so electromagnetic spectrum consists of radiations of different wavelength and on the basis of those wavelength they are classified into two types non ionizing ionizing x rays belongs to the ionizing category so prolonged exposure can cause cancers okay now who has discovered the x rays okay. the person responsible for the discovery of x rays is ro n j the name is ro and jen basically he belongs to germany ro and jen is germany belongs to germany okay the discovery of x ray was accidental finding ro and jen never intended to discover x rays he was working on something else and x rays were discovered accidentally and the first person 
whose X-ray was taken was the wife of Roland Jain. The first X-ray was taken, and the name and the person was the wife of Roland Jain. Many years before the X-ray were also called as Roland Jainograms. Roland Jainograms. Okay, and this was the accidental finding. So that is all about the introduction to the X-rays. Okay. Now coming to use of X-rays in taking the chest X-ray. What is the use of these X-rays for the diagnosis of chest diseases or respiratory diseases? That is our topic: interpretation of X-ray, chest X-ray. Okay. So first. Let us discuss about the scope of X-ray in the diagnosis of various diseases, respiratory diseases. Okay. So you can use chest X-rays. You can use X-rays here in the cases where you expect a patient to have any mass, any mass in the lungs. Mass in the sense it can be lymph node or it can be a tumor also. If you expect any patient to have any mass in the lungs, you can do chest X-ray. If you expect a patient having consolidation of the lungs, you can once again do X-ray. If you expect any patient to have diffusion in the lungs, you can once again do chest X-ray. Okay. If you expect any patient Have ingested foreign bodies. If you expect any patient having foreign body obstructions, you can once again do chest X-ray. Okay. So this is the scope of X-ray in the diagnosis of respiratory diseases. If you expect any patient suffering from pneumonia, if you expecting, if you are expecting any patient suffering from effusion, if you are expecting any patient suffering from carcinomas, you can definitely advise him X-ray. What is the limitation now? The limitations are: you cannot, or you cannot get a confirmed diagnosis of some respiratory diseases by doing X-rays. Which are those diseases? The first one is bronchial asthma. Bronchial asthma. The second one is bronchitis. The third one is bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis. The fourth one is various occupational lung diseases in their early stages. In their early stages, you won't get any more X-rays. That is the limitation of X-ray. Okay. For the diagnosis of those diseases, you have to advise them. Some other investigations. Okay. Similarly, if you have noticed any mass or any consolidation on the chest X-ray, you cannot identify their effects on the adjacent organs by doing X-ray. Say, for example, you have seen a mass is present in the right lobe of the right upper lobe of the lung. You cannot know. That whether this mass is compressing any blood vessel, is causing any compression effect on the adjacent organs. Okay, that is the limitation. You can just know the mass is present in the upper lobe, but you cannot know that whether it is causing any compression on the adjacent organs or not. You cannot know the size of that mass. You cannot know the shape of that mass by doing chest X-ray. For that, you have to go for other investigations like CT scan and MRI, right? So that is the limitation of chest X-ray. Understood? Scope and limitations. Okay. Now coming to the next point, how these X-rays are taken? What is the how the X-rays are taken? What is the process of taking X-ray? 
procedure. Normally, the X-rays are taken in PA view, posterior anterior view. What is the meaning of posterior anterior view? In the posterior anterior view, the X-ray machine or the beam of X-ray it is placed posteriorly to the patient, whereas the film X-ray film it is located anteriorly to the patient. So the beam, the source of X-ray will be posterior and the film will be anterior to the patient. Okay. So right now I am standing like this, the beam, is at, the beam is at my back, towards my back and the film here. This will be posterior anterior. But if I change like this, the beam is over here and then the film is there and that this view will be called as and if this is the position, then this view will be called as lateral view. So X-rays can be conduct, can be taken in three different views: posterior, anterior, anterior, posterior, and lateral. Okay, so you've got the differences. This is the posterior anterior view where the machine, the beam is posteriorly, film is anteriorly. Okay, if the beam is anteriorly, film is posteriorly, it is anterior posterior, then it is lateral view. Lateral. Out of these three views, which beam is commonly used? Posterior anterior. So remember this. If you write down the requisition to a technician, always mention to the posterior anterior chest x Right? Now there are certain errors that can be done by the X-ray technician while taking the X-ray. And what are those commonly occurring errors? You have to know this even though it is not going to help you uh, in the diagnosis and etc but you know the common errors what is the first error the first error is the angles at which the film and the x-ray beam was placed from the patient right normally the film and the beam should be parallel to the chest wall of the person it should not make any angle with the chest wall. It should not happen that the film is placed anteriorly exactly opposite to the chest wall and the beam of the x-ray is somewhere up or somewhere down and then the x-rays are taken. Okay? The beam, the film, it must have to be parallel to the chest wall so that the x-ray can be taken clearly. Okay? What is the second commonly occurring error? If the patient moves while taking x-ray, the x-ray will be Okay, incorrect. Okay, so the patient must have to be completely steady during taking the X-rays. What is the third commonly occurring error? Now the machine is placed properly, the patient is also silent, but he has not positioned his limbs properly. He is standing like this. Okay, this is not going to help you in the X-rays. The, the limbs should be positioned properly while taking X-rays. Okay. If the patient is standing like this, his clavicles are elevated now. Okay. Again, this is going to affect the quality of your X-ray. Okay. So positioning of the patient while taking the X-ray, positioning of the film as well as the machine and silent patient helps you in getting a better quality of the X-ray. Right? Similarly, one more thing is there which can affect the quality of X-ray that is the distance at which the beam or the machine is placed from the patient. Okay. It should ideally not be placed more than 9 feet from the patient, probably more than 9 feet. Okay. So the machine should be below 9 feet, under 9 feet from the patient. Why it is important? Because it is going to affect the shape of the or the size of the pathology right how i will tell you a little later right so what is the process the machine is placed posteriorly patient center and the film is placed anteriorly and then the x-rays are taken and all those things are placed parallel okay not making any angles right now the next point is what is the mechanism of this X-ray. Okay. Let us try and understand this with a simple example. 
this is your source of light and if i place some object against this source of light you will get to see a shadow of this okay why this is occurring this is because the radiations that are coming from the source of light they fall onto this object and they cannot penetrate this object as they cannot penetrate you see the shadow okay if suppose they penetrate there will not be any shadow if i just place a glass clean glass over here and the radiations penetrate this object then there will not be any shadow but as the rays are unable to penetrate it we are we can get a shadow on the ground okay what happens in x rays is x rays they are capable of penetrating the different organs in the body like the hollow organs like skin fascia muscles they can penetrate everything except bones so as they cannot penetrate the bones their shadow is formed on that x-ray film at the same time they cannot penetrate the hard organs hard organs in the uh, what i mean to say by hard organs whose consistency or which are not hollow okay they cannot penetrate liver they cannot penetrate heart as it is filled with blood okay so as these x-rays cannot penetrate such organs their shadow is formed onto the x-ray film right so mechanism aap logo ko samajh mein aaya what happens in x-rays they can penetrate your skin fascia muscles and hollow organs but they cannot penetrate the bones and other organs such as heart and liver we get the shadow onto the x-ray film at the same time they cannot penetrate the pathologies which are not hollow at the same time they cannot penetrate various pathologies where the calcium pigments are there okay so koi bhi pathology jahan pe calcification hua hai as bones are rich in calcium so they cannot penetrate the calcium so that is why we this kaam pe aapko image mein mil gayi hai वैसे ही अगर कोई भी पैथोलॉजी है जो फॉलो नहीं है जो अंदर से पूरी तरीके से फील्ड है वो एक्सरे उस पैथोलॉजी को भी क्रॉस नहीं कर पाएंगे तो आपको एक्सरे फील्ड पे उसकी शेडो मिल जाएगी राइट इसी तरीके से कहीं पे आपको कैल्सिफिकेशन है या पेशेंट को कैल्सिफिकेशन है तो उस कैल्सिफाइड एरिया को भी एक्सरे पेनीट्रेट नहीं कर पाती है इसीलिए उसकी भी शेडो आपको एक्सरे फील्ड पर मिल जाती है सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस penetration the x rays the the pathologies can be classified into two types the first one is called as radio luminosity radio luminosity and the second one is called as radio opacity radio opacity radio luminosity and radio opacity what is the difference opacity means jinki shadow banegi the bones are radio opaque they cannot the x rays cannot penetrate that is why the shadow will appear on to the film radio opaque but lungs they are hollow they are filled with air right so the x rays can easily penetrate it that is why it is radio lucent radio opaque and radio lucent understood the difference radio opacity and radio lucency not understood okay रेडियो ओपेसिटी इज बॉट रेडियो ओपेसिटी मीन्स वो कोई भी पैथोलॉजी जिसको एक्सरेज पेनीट्रेट नहीं कर पाती है जिनकी वजह से उसकी शेडो बन जाती है दैट इज रेडियो ओपेक प्रोड्यूस ओपेसिटी ऑन द एक्सरे बट द ऑर्गन्स और द पैथोलॉजीज थ्रू विच द एक्सरेज कैन इजीली पास आउट एंड द शेडो इज नॉट प्रोड्यूस ऑन द फिल्म those pathologies are radio lucent i will explain it with an example okay let us try and understand again going to this i have placed this object against the source of light and i have placed one more object in front of this object which shadow will be produced the shadow of which object will be produced register on the paper why why this is going to happen because the radiations are not going to reach the pain so 
whereas the radiations are not going to reach to the pain, obviously the shadow will not be produced. Why? Because in front of this pain, I have a larger object which hides the smaller object. That is why the shadow is absent. Understood? Now, if I place this pane behind the register, now the radiations are falling on it, but will you give the shadow on the ground? Why? Now the radiations, for the first case, as the radiations were not falling, there was no shadow. But for this case, now the radiations are there. But again, the shadow is absent. Why? Because this is a larger object placed in front of this smaller object and that is why the shadow is absent only. Same thing happens with your X-rays also. If a patient is having a larger pathology with a smaller pathology at the same location, you will diagnose only the larger pathology as only the larger pathology will be visible on the X-ray the smaller pathology will be hidden. For example, if a patient is having severe consolidation in the lower lobe of any lung, okay, and the same patient is having a foreign body obstruction in the lower lobe of the same lung, you will miss the foreign body obstruction. Are you getting this point? If a patient is having a consolidation in the lower lobe, okay, and if the same patient is having a foreign body obstruction in this lower lobe, the foreign body obstruction will be missed. Why? Because it is smaller pathology as compared to that larger one. Understood? So that is the one more limitation of x ray what is another limitation of X-ray? Suppose if there is presence of any pathology in the X-rays, uh, in the chest, but that pathology is unable to stop the X-ray, to stop the passage of X-ray. The X-rays simply penetrate that pathology and they go forward. What will happen? Whether the image will be present on the film or not. If the X-ray simply they pass through it and they fall onto the film whether the shadow of this pathology will be there onto the uh, film or not okay. okay so why this is happening is because this pathology is radiolucent the x-rays are easily passing through it penetrating it and they are going to fall on the x-ray films and not giving you any image of the pathology on the film so as the image is not present on the film, can we say that there is no pathology? There is a pathology, but it is radio lucent. Okay, one more limitation of X-ray. And this is very commonly noticed in cases of renal stones. This is a very common finding in cases of renal stones. We have two types of renal stones, radio lucent, radio opaque. Radio opaque stones are usually consisting of calcium pigments in them. They are capable of stopping the passage of X-rays, thus their shadows will be produced. But there are some stones which do not consist of calcium pigments in them and they are incapable of stopping the passage of X-rays. So that is why they penetrate the stones easily and the stones are missed on the X-ray findings. Right? So this is one more limitation of X-ray. पहले जो limitations मैंने disease के बारे में बताया वो तो थे ही उसके साथ साथ ये limitations भी हैं understood scope and limitations कहाँ आप advise कर सकते हो कहाँ नहीं errors क्या क्या होती हैं commonly और बाकी के छोटे छोटे जो हैं limitations वो कौन से हैं वो हमने अभी discuss किया understood यहाँ तो कोई doubt है मान लो ये बीम है एक्सरे का और ये सामने जो है यहाँ पे एक्सरे फिल्म रखी हुई है इसको ऐसे पता नहीं है ओके अब व्हाट इस गोइंग टू हैपन इस आई एम गोइंग टू प्लेस इट पैरेलल एंड आई एम गोइंग टू जस्ट पास द बीम ऑफ रेडिएशंस टू दिस थोरेसिक बॉल नाउ दिस थोरेसिक केज इस कवर्ड विथ द स्कीम फेशिया म 
Now the X-rays are capable of penetrating all those structures like skin, fascia, muscles. At the same time, the hollow organs, which are lungs. So it is going to penetrate everything except the bone and heart. Okay. So in these things, the shadow, which is, which is, is going to be seen. टेक्नीशियन ने एक्सरे ले लिया अब वो एक्सरे सही है या गलत है ये पहले तो आप इंटरप्रिट कैसे करोगे सो द क्राइटेरिया फॉर दैट इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ एक्सरे इज द एक्सरे ऑन द एक्सरे यू मस्ट सी मिनिमम ऑफ एट टू टेन पोस्टीरियर रिंग्स यू मस्ट हैव टू सी और मिनिमम ऑफ एट टू टेन पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स शुड बी विजिबल ऑन टू दी एक्स रे अब ये फंडा क्या है आठ से दस पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स होने चाहिए प्लस मिनिमम ऑफ सिक्स टू सेवन एंटेरियर रिंग्स शुड बी विजिबल ऑन टू दी एक्स रे मिनिमम एट टू टेन पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स एंड सिक्स टू सेवन एंटेरियर रिंग्स शुड बी विजिबल नाउ लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज दिस This is your vertebral column and this is the thoracic spine. We have twelve vertebrae in the thoracic vertebral column, and from twelve thoracic vertebrae, there is origin of twelve pair of ribs. Okay, so this is the origin of twelve pairs of ribs, and these twelve pairs of ribs are going anteriorly. Out of them, the first seven ribs they are attached with your sternum. Okay. Then they are attached to the sternum directly. Okay. Then the next three ribs they are not attached directly to the sternum. They are attached to the sternum by means of cartilages. And the last two ribs they are floating. They are not attached to the sternum. Not directly. Not through cartilages. So on the basis of this attachment of the rib ribs to the sternum, the ribs are classified into two types. Two ribs and false ribs. Two ribs are those who are attached to the sternum, and false ribs are those who are not attached to the sternum directly. Now, these false ribs are again classified into two types: the one which are attached to the sternum by means of the cartilages, and the another one is floating ribs. So, first seven: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are true ribs. Eight, nine, ten. They are attached to the, or we can call them false ribs, and eleven, twelve are floating ribs. Right? Now see the course. How these ribs are originating at this vertebral column, and they are running obliquely. They are not straight like this. The ribs are not straight. They are running obliquely. So the first rib, it is originated from this transverse process, and then it is running obliquely, and then it is attached with this for the manubrium sternum. Okay, and the first facet. The point of attachment of this rib to the manubrium sternum. This is facet, okay. And the first rib is attached, attached is attached to this first facet, okay. And just above this, there is attachment of clavicle, okay. At the sternoclavicular joint, right. So it is running obliquely, and you can see from the front that this sternum is little bit lower than that of the First thoracic vertebrae, so it is that is why it is running obliquely, right? Similarly, coming to the second rib, it is originating from here. Second thoracic vertebrae running obliquely, and then it is attached to this point, which is called a sternal angle. Sternal angle. What is sternal angle? It is the point of attachment of manubrium sternum to the body of sternum. What is sternal angle? It is the point of attachment of the manubrium sternum with the body of sternum. That is your sternal angle. Okay. You can see a small notch at the manubrium sternum here. Okay. This is called as jugular notch or supra sternal notch. This notch is called as jugular notch or supra sternal notch. Just adjacent to that suprasternal notch, you have supra, uh, you have sternoclavicular joint. 
okay the clavicle is attached over here adjacently to the supraclavicular notch that is sternoclavicular joint and just below the sternoclavicular joint there is a first facet for the attachment of first rib below it there is the second rib attachment at sterno uh, at the sternal angle what is the clinical significance of this sternal angle this is very important portion sternal angle uh, anatomical surface landmark the first thing why it is important sternal sternal angle it helps you you just feel the sternal angle and by feeling the sternal angle you can know that now this is the at this point this is your second rib okay the second clinical significance of that sternal angle is below the sternal angle there is bifurcation of trachea okay the trachea it is originating from your nasopharynx the nose and then nostrils nasopharynx etc then the vocal cords and then there is trachea so the trachea is the hollow tube running down into the thoracic cavity and it bifurcates just behind the sternal angle into right and left abdominals so that is the second important surface landmark okay of that sternal angle below the sternal angle behind the sternal angle there is bifurcation of trachea what is the third importance of the sternal angle there is origin of major vessels from the aorta just behind the sternal angle so from the arch of aorta there is origin of three major vessels okay subclavicular and brachiocephalic and all carotid arteries so where they are originating just behind the sternal angle so it is anatomically important landmark okay. by identifying the sternal angle you can identify three different things so the second rib is attached over here at the sternal angle then the third rib then the fourth rib fifth rib sixth and seventh rib finally it is attached to the this last portion of the body of sternum okay now if you look this thoracic cage from the behind you can see these many pairs of ribs okay at the same time you will see that when the rib is passing when this rib is going anteriorly and this is going again anteriorly in this posterior rib you will see the anterior rib also plus you will see the sternal the clavicle also you can see this clavicle also okay so i can see now i can see this the first rib is going okay and when it is coming anteriorly i can see this portion of the first rib now similarly this is the second rib and this is going like this third okay so on the chest x ray minimum 8 to 10 posterior ribs should be visible at the same time minimum 6 to 7 anterior ribs should have to be present okay that means that is correctly taken x ray 8 to 10 posterior ribs and 6 to 7 anterior ribs let us see on this on the x ray ki ye kaise dikhta hai okay aur kaise counting uski karni hai okay now as we are discussing the thorax hum thoda aur dekh lete hain this portion of the thorax this is called as superior thoracic inlet superior thoracic inlet from this inlet there is entry of various structures like the trachea esophagus okay and then this is the thoracic cavity and this thoracic cavity is again divided into more cavities the first cavity is called as pleural cavity and the second cavity is called as mediastinal cavity the pleural cavities they consist of the lungs whereas the mediastinal cavity it consists of the heart and the major vessels as well as the trachea theek hai plus the esophagus which is going down okay so mediastinal cavity and the pleural cavities pleural cavity is consisting of lungs mediastinal cavity consists of various mediastinal structures okay now the lower portion of this thoracic cage this is called as thoracic outlet this portion is thoracic outlet and this thoracic outlet it is protected by diaphragmatic muscle okay it is protected by the diaphragmatic muscle in fact the diaphragm helps to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity okay and this diaphragm have various openings in it 
one for the passage of the thoracic aorta and continuation as the abdominal aorta and the second the continuation of esophagus into the sternum okay so this diaphragm also have some openings for the passage of major vessels as well as for passage of the uh, esophagus okay. and this is protected by the diaphragm understood so this is superior thoracic inlet and the thoracic outlet consisting of this thoracic cavity which is further divided into pleural and mediastinal cavity consisting of lungs and the mediastinal structures okay. so stop let me and you will see the crossing of clavicle over here okay so first it is going anteriorly and it is getting attached over here ki yahan pe attach hui hai first strip aur yahan pe clavicle bhi at the same time second ring okay so at this you are seeing this clavicle first you are seeing the right side jaa rahi hai anteriorly jaa rahi hai aur jab ye anteriorly pahunch rahi hai first second and third ring यहाँ तीन पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स और एक एंटेरियर रिंग यहाँ पे आपको होगी फर्स्ट एंटेरियर सिमिलरली फोर्थ पोस्टेरियर फिफ्थ पोस्टेरियर सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स आउट ऑफ दोज द टेन पोस्टेरियर रिंग्स शुड हैव टू बी बेसिकल ओके एंड इफ वी काउंट द एंटेरियर रिंग्स फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ सिक्स सेवन अंडरस्टूड डिफरेंसेस posterior posterior anterior anterior posterior. and if we see compare this with this with portion now first rib, second anterior, third anterior, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh anterior, and if we count the posterior now this is first second third fourth fifth सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन अंडरस्टूड द डिफरेंसेस नाउ लेट अस ट्राई टू सी देम ये हमने अभी रिम केज पे दिखा है देखा है लेट अस ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई दीज रिम्स ऑन द एक्सरे सो एक नॉर्मल एक्सरे ले लेते हैं दिस वन ओके अब कोई भी एक आ जाओ और मुझे यहां पे पोस्टेरियर और एंटेरियर रिम्स की नाम मानसी आपका नाम मानसी है पर Tell me how many posterior ribs. This is a posterior and anterior view. Tell me how many posterior ribs are there and anterior. Point there. Which number? Tell me the numbers. What's the number? Confirm the name of patient. Confirm the name of patient with the name written on X-ray. ये सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट होता है एक्सरे को इंटरप्रिटेट करने से पहले कंफर्म द नेम ऑफ पेशेंट विद द नेम रिटर्न ऑन एक्सरे कई बार घरों में क्या होता है कि दो तीन पेशेंट्स होते हैं सेम डिसीज से सफरिंग हो रहे होते हैं और पेशेंट जल्दबाजी में किसी दूसरे रिलेटिव का एक्सरे आपके पास में ले आता है और आप बिना कन्फर्म किए अगर उस एक्सरे के डायग्नोस उस एक्सरे के फाइंडिंग से डायग्नोसिस कर देते हो तो आपका डायग्नोसिस गलत हो जाता है मान लो मैं और अर्पिता एक ही घर में है रहते हैं ठीक है और अर्पिता को कफ एक्सपेक्टोरेशन था वो जल्दबाजी में मेरा एक्सरे लेके टीना की ओपीडी में चली गई और टीना ने देखा उसको एक्सरे मेरा देखा और मेरा जो डायग्नोसिस था वो अर्पिता को कर दिया राइट जस्ट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट एक्सरे फाइंडिंग तो ये गलती ना हो इसलिए आपको हमेशा ये कन्फर्म कर लेना है पेशेंट का नाम और एक्सरे पे लिखा हुआ नाम दोनों एक ही है सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप कंफर्म द नेम ऑफ पेशेंट विद द नेम रिटर्न ऑन जे सिक्स ने सेकेंड इज डेट ऑफ एक्सरे टेकन डेट ऑफ एक्सरे टेकन ये भी बहुत जरूरी होता है फॉर वेरियस डायग्नोसिस डेट ऑफ एक्सरे टेकन मान लो कभी ऐसे भी हो सकता है कि राइट नाउ आई एम हैविंग कफ एंड एक्सपेक्टोरेशन एंड फीवर ओके आई एम हैविंग सम साउंड्स इन माय चेस्ट फॉर विच आई हैव बीन टू अ डॉक्टर वी कैन एक्सरे व्हिच इज 2 इयर्स ओल्ड ओके एंड आई हैव जस्ट मिस टू सी द डेट रिटर्न ऑन द एक्सरे एंड 2 इयर्स बिफोर देयर वाज प्रेजेंस ऑफ ट्यूबरक्यूलर कैविटीज ऑन द एक्सरेस एंड 
now I am coupling of cuff and uh, expectoration and on the basis of uh, that X-ray finding, right? Now the diagnosis of that patient is the patient is having the doctor is the patient is having tuberculosis cavities. But in fact, the cavitations were present two years before, not now. The diagnosis can be different this time. So what I have to do is, as a doctor, see for date of X-ray taken and always demand for recent X-ray. Always demand for recent X-ray. What is the third point that is to be taken care of? See for the view. See for view. कौन से view में X-ray लिया गया है? See for view of X-ray. व्यू जरूरी इसलिए होता है क्योंकि कई बार जो है आपको करेक्ट पैथोलॉजी एक व्यू में ही मिल सकती है या दूसरी व्यू में वो पैथोलॉजी जो है चेंज हो जाती है फॉर एग्जांपल एक पेशेंट इज हैविंग कार्डियोमेगाली एंड यू आर लुकिंग एट दी एपी व्यू ओके द शैडो द कार्डियक शैडो विल बी एनलार्ज्ड एज कंपेयर टू दैट ऑफ पीएल ठीक है या फिर कार्डियोमेगाली नहीं है पेशेंट को और एक्सरे लिया गया है एपी व्यू में तो एपी व्यू में तो एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू चेस्ट एक्सरे लिया है एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू में तो एंटेरियर पोस्ट एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू में क्या होता है द हार्ट इज गेटिंग एक्सपोज टू द एक्सरे इन द वेरी फर्स्ट जब हम पोस्टेरियर एंटेरियर भी लेते हैं तो हार्ट जो है थोड़ा सा दूर होता है फ्रॉम द बीन एज कंपेयर टू द एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू में हार्ट की पोजीशन बीन के थोड़े से नजदीक होगी Maybe few centimeters only, but it will be nearer to the beam as compared to the posterior anterior. So what happens in this case is, if the X-ray is taken anterior posteriorly, I will have cardiomegaly on the X-ray, which will be false. नहीं है, लेकिन anterior posterior लिया गया है, इसलिए cardiac shadow बड़ी आई. So that doesn't mean that I am having cardiomegaly, right? इसीलिए व्यू का देखना भी जरूरी होता है सिमिलरली कुछ डिसीजेज होती है कुछ ऑर्गन्स की डिसीजेज होती है जहाँ पे आपको एक पर्टिकुलर व्यू होना ही चाहिए जैसे अगर आपको किसी पेशेंट का आर्थराइटिस डायग्नोसिस करना है सो यू मस्ट हैव दी लेटरल व्यू आल्सो सिर्फ एंटेरो पोस्टेरियर व्यू लेके आपका काम नहीं बनने वाला है डायग्नोसिस का इन दैट केस यू हैव टू टेक दी लेटरल व्यू ऑल्सो ठीक है लेटरल व्यू ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर जॉइंट दैट इज वेस्ट सी फॉर द व्यू एंड Confirm whether it is aligning with your expectation or not. If it is not, then you ask the patient कि भाई ये गलत view में लिया है, फिर से जाके इस view में करके ले गया। So ये पहले तीन points आपके हो गए, तीन steps आपके हो गए। You have confirmed the name, you have seen the date, and the view was according to your expectations. Now you can proceed to the fourth step of interpretation of X-ray. That is count the number of ribs. Count the number of ribs on X-ray. जिसमें हमने देखा कि minimum आठ से दस, eight to ten posterior ribs should be there, and six to seven anterior ribs should have to be there. अब अगर ये है तो बहुत अच्छी बात है. Proceed to the next step. Okay. तो जब आप रिब केज देख रहे हो मैं सिर्फ नंबर्स आपको काउंट नहीं कर रहे हैं यू हैव टू सी फॉर टू मोर थिंग्स द फर्स्ट थिंग इज वेन यू आर लुकिंग एट दी रिब केज एंड यू आर काउंटिंग द नंबर्स यू आल्सो हैव टू सी फॉर एविडेंस ऑफ फ्रैक्चर ऑफ रिब्स एविडेंस ऑफ फ्रैक्चर ऑफ रिब्स कभी भी कोई आपको फ्रैक्चर दिख रही है या नहीं अगर दिख रही है तो आपको नोट डाउन कर लेना है सो द फ्रैक्चर कैन बी इन अ सिंगल रिंग और इट कैन बी मल्टीपल रिंग्स ठीक है मान लो किसी पेशेंट में राइट फोर्थ पोस्टेरियर रिंग में कॉम्प्लेक्स फ्रैक्चर है मतलब टुकड़े हो गए हैं उसके पूरी तरीके से रिंग टूट चुकी है ओके सो वॉट यू हैव टू नोट डाउन इज द पेशेंट इज है कॉम्प्लेक्स फ्रैक्चर एट दी राइट फोर्थ पोस्टेरियर रिंग कि वो सिंपल फ्रैक्चर भी हो सकता है या हेयरलाइन फ्रैक्चर भी हो सकता है जो भी है आपको नोट डाउन कर लेना है सी फॉर एविडेंस ऑफ फ्रैक्चर्स 
of ribs and the third point that you have to see for is position of clavicles see for position of clavicles at the same time fractures position of clavicle and fractures clavicles hamesha horizontally placed hote hain with this term wo horizontally placed hone chahiye matlab patient mein uske jo shoulders hai wo sahi sahi rakhe hue the x ray lene ke samay agar wo usko shoulders ko elevate kar dega aur x ray leke uska clavicles kya ho jayenge elevated ho jayenge so ideally clavicles should be horizontally placed and there should not be any fracture on the clavicles okay so that is your four step count the number of ribs and but don't just count the numbers see for evidence of any fracture of the ribs and see for the position of clavicle and fractures understood that completes your four step of interpretation of x ray coming to the fifth step what is the fifth step c for position of trachea c for position of trachea okay now let us try and understand ye trachea kahan hota hai aur kaise hota hai let us go to this one x Now can you see here the hollow black colored tube-like structure just at the center? Here, 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 trachea is always centrally located and when it passes down then it is slightly shifted to the right side and when it passes at the level of sterno or sternal angle it bifurcates into right and left bronchus so here you can see the bifurcation of trachea as well it is bifurcating into right and left bronchus major bronchus okay so this portion this is the trachea and its bifurcation trachea is always centrally located there are various conditions in which the trachea can get deviated the position of trachea can get shifted okay so it can get shifted to this side or this side the trachea gets shifted to the same side in cases of consolidations and in cases of fibrosis and collapse तो यहीं पे पैथोलॉजी है और प्रक्रिया भी उसी तरफ शिफ्टेड है प्रक्रिया गेट शिफ्टेड टू द सेम साइड इन केसेस ऑफ फाइब्रोसिस एंड कंसोलिडेशंस बिकॉज़ दिस पुल्स द प्रक्रिया टुवर्ड्स इटसेल्फ दीस पैथोलॉजीज पुल्स द प्रक्रिया टुवर्ड्स इटसेल्फ फाइब्रोसिस अगर है यहां पे लंग्स में बहुत सीवियर फाइब्रोसिस हो चुका है या कोई मास है या कोलैप्स हुआ है तो लंग क्या करेगी वो पार्ट क्या करेगा प्रक्रिया को अपनी तरफ खींच लेगा ओके these pathologies pulls the trachea towards itself whereas there are certain pathologies where the trachea is pushed to the opposite side say for example this patient is having pneumothorax the patient is having effusion in these cases that pathology will push the trachea to opposite side it will not pull it will push pneumothorax and effusion it will push the trachea to opposite side so trachea can get shifted to the same side trachea can get deviated to the opposite side if it is deviated to the same side that means it can be fibrosis or collapse if it is opposite side then it will be effusion or pneumothorax understood so c for trachea the fourth step is c for trachea this is the position of trachea which is centrally located Once you are done with the position of trachea and you see that the trachea is central, proceed to the fifth step of interpretation. And the fifth step is C for cardiac shadow. This central portion, this is your cardiac shadow. The clinical term for this cardiac shadow is cardiac silhouette. The clinical term is cardiac silhouette. S I L H O U E. Double T E, cardiac silhouette. 
एस आई एल एच ओ यू ई डबल टी कार्डियक सी हो and if you compare the cardiac shadow the diameter of cardiac shadow to that of the entire diameter of this thoracic cage you will see that this cardiac shadow is less than 50% of the entire thoracic cage okay the cardiac shadow must have to be less than 50% of the entire thoracic cage if it is more than 50% then it means the patient is having cardiomegaly cardio megaly normally the cardiac shadow is less than 50% of entire thoracic cage aapko sirf dekhne se hi pata chal jayega ki ye 50% se kam hai you don't have to take the scale and measure it theek hai dekhne se ye below 50% hai isliye iska cardio megaly ruled out hai now remember in this cardiac shadow this portion of the heart this is the left ventricle this portion is left ventricle there is this portion it is called as right atrium this is not right ventricle that is right atrium okay this is the apex of the heart this is called as apex of the heart left ventricle right atrium now if you see that the left the enlargement is on this side the cardiomegaly is on this side this is because of left ventricular hypertrophy but if the enlargement is on this side then this means that the patient is having right atrial hypertrophy understood so left ventricular and right atrial now from this position ye jo portion aapko dikh raha hai this is your superior vena cava this is superior vena cava which is opening into right atrium and this portion yahan se yahan pe aapko ek curved structure dikhne ke this curved portion this is the arch of aorta this portion is arch of aorta which is clinically called as aortic knuckle aortic knuckle k n u c k l e aortic knuckle k n u c k l e aortic knuckle okay so when you are looking at the cardiac shadow don't just see for the size of heart you also have to see where the apex of heart is pointing because that apex of heart is going to help you in identifying the side of x-ray for this x-ray the x-ray technician has not mentioned which one is the right side of chest wall and which one is the left side of chest wall okay so how can i come to know that other is ko patient ko is side mein pathology hoti to main kaise pata karta ki ye kaun si side hai isme to likha nahi hai right hai ya left hai to fir mujhe pata kaise chalega by looking at this portion apex of heart this side mein apex pointed hai that is the left side but this side mein apex pointed hai wo side kaun sa hota hai left side so for this x ray this is the left side of heart the chest wall and this one is the right side of chest wall so cardiac shadow aapko aise cases mein ye identify karne mein bhi help karta hai ki right side kaun si hai aur left side kaun si hai right exception to this is dextrocardia isme exception kya hai dextrocardia in dextrocardia the apex may be shifted or apex may be visible on the right side and if you don't know this thing then you will miss diagnosis this side mein apex se wo left side hoti hai yahi mind mein rakh liya to aap dextrocardia ke patient mein bhi left side hi padoge usko pehle usko right side mein ठीक है तो अब इसको कैसे रूल आउट करना है ये मैं आगे बताऊंगा यस रिमेंबर एक्सेप्शन टू दिस इज एक्सट्रो कार्डिया वेयर द कार्डियक शेडो इज प्रेजेंट वेयर द अपेक्स ऑफ हार्ट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ द चेस्ट ओके सो दैट वाज योर फिफ्थ स्टेप सी फॉर कार्डियक शेडो सी फॉर द पोजीशन ऑफ अपेक्स एंड सी फॉर साइज ऑफ द हार्ट कमिंग टू द सिक्स्थ स्टेप सी फॉर कार्डियोफ्रेनिक एंगल सिक्स स्टेप क्या है सी फॉर कार्डियोफ्रेनिक एंगल नाउ व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कार्डियोफ्रेनिक एंगल दिस इज द एंगल वेयर द कार्डियक शैडो मीट्स विद द डायफ्रेमेटिक शैडो दिस इज द एंगल वेयर द कार्डियक शैडो इंटरसेप्ट्स विद द डायफ्रेमेटिक शैडो सो पे अटेंशन ओवर हियर 
This is the right dome of diaphragm. This one is right dome of diaphragm, and this is going to be like this. और ये है लेफ्ट डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम ओके तो यहाँ पे राइट डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम की शेडो इंटरसेप्ट हो रही है राइट एट्रियम के साथ में दिस पॉइंट इट इज कार्डियो फ्रेनिक एंगल एंड दिस कार्डियो फ्रेनिक एंगल इज शार्प नॉर्मली इट इज शार्प इट इज नॉट ऑब्लिटरेटेड ओके इफ दिस कार्डियो फ्रेनिक एंगल इट इज ऑब्लिटरेटेड द कॉमन रीजन फॉर इट कैन बी टेरी कार्डियल इफ्यूजन Pericardial effusion, cardiophrenic okay. angle. Understood? Once you have cleared the cardiophrenic angle on both the sides, the cardiophrenic angle will be sharp. Proceed to the next step. On the seventh step, I am. The seventh step is C for costophrenic angle. Costophrenic angle. This costophrenic angle. It is the angle where the shadow of the rib cage meets with the shadow of diaphragm. Here, pay attention. Yeah, now the shadow of diaphragm and shadow of the rib cage it intersects with each other. Costophrenic angle. Okay. And once again, the costophrenic angle is also sharp, like that of arrow. It is sharp. When it starts to get obliterated, it means the patient is developing pleural effusion. It means the patient is developing pleural effusion. That is your seventh state. Obliterated costophrenic angle means the patient is developing pleural effusion. Understood? Coming to the eighth state now. C for dome of diaphragm. C for डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम यहाँ पे आपको राइट और लेफ्ट डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम दिख रहा है राइट डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम इज स्लाइटली अपर दैन द लेफ्ट डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम बिकॉज ऑफ द लीवर प्रेजेंट बिलो इट एंड एज लीवर इज हार्ड इन कंसिस्टेंसी इट इज नॉट ऑलो ऑर्गन यहाँ पे इससे स्पेनिट्रेट नहीं कर पाई और यहाँ पे आपको ओपेसिटी मिल गई है सो यू आर गेनिंग Opacity below the right dome of diaphragm. Okay, this is the liver. Okay, and below the left dome of diaphragm, you can see the radiolucency. This portion में आपको blackish color दिख रहा है. Radiolucency. ये lucency क्यों है? क्योंकि यहाँ पे air present है. अब dome of diaphragm के नीचे air होने का reason क्या हो सकता है? Lungs तो यहाँ से खत्म हो गए हैं. यहाँ पे air क्यों है? Why? Because that is the air present in fundus of stomach. That is why it is radiolucent. Okay. Now again, this radiolucency is present on left side. Okay. ये जरूरी है फिर एक बार आपको side determination करने के लिए X-ray. Now for this X-ray, why we can say that this is the left side of the chest wall? Because the apex and the radiolucency below the left dome of diaphragm both are present on this particular side, which is the left side. ठीक है? इसलिए ये side जो है, ये left side है, इस chest wall का. Apex as well as radiolucency both are present on the left side. If it happens that the apex is pointing towards this side and radiolucency is on this side, then let's try this. Then this is dextrocardia, right? So now this will help you to 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 help you कंप्लीट साइटस एवर्स सारे के सारे ऑर्गेन्स बस अब मान लो यहाँ पे लिखा है राइट साइड यहाँ पे लिखा है लेफ्ट साइड और उसका अपेक्स भी यहाँ पे है रेडियोल्यूशन सी भी यहाँ पे है डेट इस साइटस एवर्स बस सो सी फॉर डोम ऑफ डायफ्राम इज योर नेक्स्ट स्टेप 
below the right dome of diaphragm you do not expect any radiolucency and below the left dome of diaphragm you expect radiolucency because of presence of gas in the fundus of stomach clear any doubts till now kitne steps hue hain nine steps hue now coming to the next step which is examination of your lung fields which is the most important portion examination of lung fields and you have to compare the right lung field to the left lung field compare right lung field with left lung field and you will see that lung fields are radio lucent because lungs are empty consisting of gases excess can easily penetrate them giving you no opacity on the lungs still you can see some opacities just adjacent to the cardiac shadow yahan pe these are bronchovascular markings you expect the opacities small opacities just adjacent to the cardiac shadows which are called as bronchovascular markings these are normal but the opacities on this portion they are absent अगर यहाँ पे वो प्रेजेंट होती तो हमें उसका कोई पैथोलॉजी आइडेंटिफाई करना होता करना पड़ता ठीक है बट नहीं है सिमिलरली जस्ट एडजस्टेंटली एरोटिक नकल यहाँ पे जो प्रक्रिया बाइफर्गेट हो रहा है एंड इट इज एंटरिंग इनसाइड दी लंग्स टू एंड ओपनिंग ऑफ द लंग्स विच इज फॉर दस हाइलम प्रक्रिया बाइफर्गेट होकर जैसे ही लंग्स में एंटर करता है तो लंग में छोटी ओपनिंग्स प्रेजेंट है उस ओपनिंग को हम हाइलम कहते हैं जहाँ से अंदर जाएगा एट दैट हाइलम देर आर प्रेजेंस ऑफ सम लिंक नोट्स विच आर कॉल्ड एज हाइलर लिंक नोट्स हाइलर लिंक नोट्स दे आर नॉन विजिबल नॉर्मल इफ दे गेट इनफ्लेम यू विल गेट हाइलर लिंक फैडिनोपैथी हाइलर लिंक फैडिनोपैथी हाइलर लिंक फैडिनोपैथी so you are going to see the lung fields whether they are radio lucent or whether they are radio opaque if only radio opacities are noticed adjacent to the cardiac shadow it is okay this is bronchovascular markings but if it is very dense opacity seen on different other portions of the lung fields then we have to identify the pathology for sure right coming to the next point For better understanding of the lung fields, what we do is we divide the lung fields into four different portions. The first portion of the lung field, this is called as apex. यहाँ से second ring, third ring से ऊपर वाला portion, third posterior ring से. This is the apex of lung, right lung and left lung. So compare apex of right lung to the apex of left lung. Then from third ring to, for our convenience, let us do sixth ring. This is the upper portion, upper pole of right, and compare it with compare it with upper portion of left. Then six to tenth, uh, seven, uh, eight, nine downwards. This is the middle portion. Okay, compare it with this portion, and then ninth downwards. This is the lower portion. Compare. Okay. So for our convenience, what we do is we are dividing the lung fields into four different portions: apex, upper, middle, and lower. and we are comparing apex of right with the apex of left upper portion of right with the upper right upper portion of left lung middle of uh, uh, right and middle of left lower of right and lower of left and we are comparing them right so this is your next step examination of lung fields see for any radio opacity radio opacity suggests consolidations effusions okay bones complex focus etc at the same time you have to also be careful about hyper radio lucency bahut zyada radio lucency ab yahan pe aapko black color dikh raha hai but it is not tar black tar black jaisa nahi hai tar par tar par tar tar black nahi hai it is blackish but it is not tar black if you get tar black appearance bahut zyada kaala 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 dikh raha hai lung fields mein then this is hyper radio lucency bahut zyada air wahan pe accumulate hui hai isliye wo bahut kala dikh raha hai 
and the diagnosis of this is pneumothorax the diagnosis for that coal black or tar black appearance of lung veins is pneumothorax okay so for example agar is patient mein aapko this side pe bahut zyada kala 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 dikh raha hai aur yahan pe thoda sa kam hai then this means the patient is developing pneumothorax on the right side understood this is your next step of uh, next step in the apro interpretation of chest x ray see for lung fields c for radio opacity c for the radio lucency and compare on both the sides and the last step is c for anything else apart from this c for anything else apart from these structures everything else से फॉर एग्जाम्पल अब अगर ये बेड रिडर पेशेंट है जिसको कार्डियर मॉनिटर लगाया हुआ है अटैच किया है तो आपको वहाँ पे चेस्ट लीड्स दिखेंगे एक्सरेस पे ओके अगर इस पेशेंट में पेसमेकर लगाया हुआ है तो आपको पेसमेकर भी दिखेगा एक्सरे अगर इस पेशेंट ने गले में कुछ पहना हुआ है तो वो भी एक्सरे पे आ जाएगा सिमिलरली अगर इस पेशेंट ने कोई फॉरन बॉडी इंजेस्ट की है पिन कॉइन पेबल कुछ भी कोई फॉरेन बॉडी इंजेस की है तो वो फॉरेन बॉडी भी आपको एक्सरे पे दिखेगी ओके सो सी फॉर एवरीथिंग एल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स ठीक है अंडरस्टूड और कुछ दिखता है तो उसको नोट डाउन करना है कि फॉरेन बॉडी मुझे मिल है या पेस मेकर उसमें है अंडरस्टूड कभी कभी पेशेंट में बैल्स जो आर्टिफिशियली रिप्लेस किए होते हैं वो भी आ जाते हैं अंडरस्टूड तो लेट अस रिवाइज वन मोर टाइम कि स्टेप बाय स्टेप अप्रोच क्या है पहली स्टेप क्या थी कंफर्म द नेम ऑफ पेशेंट विद द नेम लेटर ऑन एक्सरे दूसरी स्टेप क्या है नेम ऑफ एक्सरे टेकन तीसरी स्टेप सी फॉर द नेम कौन सा है एक्सरे का चौथी स्टेप नंबर ऑफ रिब्स प्लस फ्रैक्चर्स और क्लैपिंग कर के देखना है फिर नेक्स्ट स्टेप कौन सी है ट्रैकिंग ऑफ पोजीशन ऑफ ट्रैकिंग नेक्स्ट स्टेप कौन सी है कार्डियोफ्रेनियम फिर कार्डियोफ्रेनियम एंगल फिर ऑस्ट्रोफेनियम एंगल फिर टोम्स ऑफ डायफ्राम और लंग फेल्स और लास्ट स्टेप एवरीथिंग एल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम अबव मेंशन स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके दैट फिनिशेस योर इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ दिस ये नॉर्मल एक्सरे है एज पर एज दिस एक्सरे इज कंसर्न वी विल से दैट एज 8 टू 10 पोस्टीरियर रिब्स आर देयर 6 टू 7 एंटीरियर रिब्स 